let me try and unpack this image for you. This is an LBW appeal late in the game between Bangladesh and South Africa. And this game is going down to the wire. Now clearly you can see this is not out, but it was given on the field. And the more important thing here is the ball. This ball didn't stay here, it didn't just trickle out. It went down to the boundary after that decision was given. And when I say the game was late and close, I mean Bangladesh needed 26 from 23 balls. And a four here would have meant that they were back at a runner ball, which on a pitch like this is your best and possibly only chance of winning. But Bangladesh did not get that boundary. And that is all down to an issue created by DRS. Let's call it the LBW loophole. You might want to go on the attack against trolls of your favorite player. But to do that, you need a good defense. And we choose NordVPN. They are our protection against cyber cutters or when some board has geo-blocked a great clip. NordVPN will help you get through the straight bat of any rights restrictions so that you can watch all the cricket you want. Protect your computer like the fastest, nastiest, scariest bowler in the world is coming for it with NordVPN today. That's nordvpn.com forward slash K-I-M-B-E-R. Go Nord today. So this is all really about DRS, okay? But it comes in because of the MCC and how they drew up the laws. Now, there was nothing wrong with the way that the MCC drew up the laws at all. In fact, they made a lot of sense. And when it comes to dead ball, here's the first thing that makes a lot of sense. Once a player is out, from the moment that they are out, it is a dead ball. That, of course, stops double plays and other things within cricket that get a little bit murky. So the MCC, all those years ago, came up with their laws for the dead ball, and it makes perfect sense. The problem is how the laws actually get involved with DRS. That is not as ideal a situation. And that's because DRS actually gives us more information and it can reverse decisions on the field. So instead of looking at the MCC when it comes to DRS, of course, we have to look at the ICC because they are the ones who have it and no one else actually does. And it's not the only thing that international cricket has that other forms of cricket don't have. Club cricket is very different, as is league cricket and first-class cricket and everything. So the MCC needs its own playing conditions, which it's had for a long time. And quite often the ICC playing conditions are different to the laws anyway, okay? And so there's a whole bunch of things in the ICC playing conditions about DRS that the MCC does not really have to worry about all that much. Okay, so with that in mind, let's get to the story from today. Bangladesh are playing South Africa. It's a low-scoring game because it's at New York. It gets very close, again, because it's at New York. And so at one stage, there was a full ball bowled to Bangladesh when they don't need too many runs to win that hits the pad and flies off down to four leg buys. But unfortunately, before that can happen, there is an appeal and it is given LBW. So you don't actually get any leg buys in this situation. And so Bangladesh lose out on four runs. However, it is appealed by Bangladesh and it turns out that they were right and that it should have been runs all along. But because the ball hit the pad and it was given out LBW, from that point onwards, nothing else counts, right? The ball is dead. So the fact that the ball went off 4-4 four, four runs doesn't matter. They don't get those leg buys, even though the umpire made a mistake. So what you really get here with this is what I would call half a decision. We've decided to use technology in order to give us half a decision because we are saying in this particular case the umpire made an error and no one's having a go at the umpire umpires make mistakes as do players all the time but we have the technology in place to be able to correct an umpire's mistake and so in this particular case we say that that appeal was incorrect and while the dead ball stands the batter is no longer out but bangladesh miss out on, on four runs why is that an issue because bangladesh are on a terrible pitch of course and south africa managed to keep them to a four-run loss. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that if those league buys had been given at that stage, instead of the LBW, that Bangladesh win, right? Butterfly effect and all that sort of thing. Although it certainly would have taken a lot of pressure off at that stage. And South Africa was still coming very hard. And Bangladesh had many other chances to win that game. Had a couple of pretty juicy balls in the last over from Keshev Maharaj. Not to mention how many overthrows did South Africa keep giving them? But the real question here is, if we are going to bring DRS in and it doesn't necessarily fit within the laws of cricket, 
we might have to change the playing conditions a little bit here. When it comes to technology, there's already a few things that are changing the playing conditions, right? So if you look at no balls, we used to have a situation uh, where the no ball would be called by the square leg umpire straight away. And so that everyone knew it was a no ball. Then we started calling it a little bit later and that created some murkiness. So eventually we went all the way in on technology for the IPL and will eventually happen in most major cricket around the world is we measured the players so we know where their waist actually is. Despite the fact that we don't actually know where wastes are, but that's a whole different conversation. So we fixed it with no balls and the same with wides. We can now have a much better idea of whether a ball is a wide or not just by going to the technology and reviewing that. So we are already looking at not just potential dismissals like we used to, but we're also looking at extra runs and whether technology can play a part in that. You can also um, add the umpires looking at the boundary row. We use technology to tell if extra runs should have been scored or not already. And remember, this was a leg by, but I just want to say something else. What if it wasn't? What if it was runs off the bat and the umpire made a horrendous decision and it was just flicked away off the pads and it went for four and the umpire didn't see it? That batter has made no error at all. They have hit the ball for four and they still would not get those four runs. So you could see what the problem is there. But really, if you want to get full on with this, I can take you all the way through the looking glass, which is the situation that a lot of us have been waiting for to happen for a very long time, which is it is the last ball of a game. The batting team need four runs to win. The bowler comes in and they bowl a Yorker. There is a loud appeal. The umpire gives it out. And while all that happens, the ball trickles off for four. Then we come back and there is a DRS decision on it. And it turns out that the ball was completely off the bat. The appeal was incorrect. The ball has gone for four runs and it now gets overturned. But the batting team still lose the game. Despite the fact that we overturned one wrong decision, we decided not to overturn the other wrong decision. So how do we fix all this? So my plan for this is quite simple, but again, it sort of goes away from the MCC and the laws, changes dead ball quite a bit, but looks at updating the playing conditions with the new dead ball law. So let's say there is an appeal in a DRS game. Instead of the umpire giving that decision straight away, they wait for the ball to play out. So it might go for a single, it might be a dot ball, it might go for four. All those things are possible. Then the umpire decides if it is out or not. And if they decide to give it out at that stage, then the batting team can decide whether they want to appeal the decision. Let's say they do appeal the decision and it turns out that the runs came off the bat and that is overturned. We now know what played out on that ball. Just because we didn't go to a dead ball earlier. It's not going to work in all levels of cricket. But there are many things that don't work in all levels of cricket that do with the professional side. Some people might say that that's sometimes unfair to the bowling team who did everything they could to get the correct decision from an umpire. It wasn't their mistake that the umpire did that. But if we're using technology to try and get decisions more accurate than ever before, why would we also not want to get runs off the bat more accurate or leg buys more accurate, right? We're using technology and it opens things up. And if you look at technology now, there was a lot of people that wanted VAR and DRS cancelled when they first came in. But the problem is, we can see all these things, right? This isn't like the old days where you might get a dodgy LBW decision at the end, there was an appeal, then the player was out, and that was it. We now have DRS. So we can tell that that Bangladesh decision was bad, and that a dot ball was awarded when it should have been four runs. I don't want to sit here and slag off the umpire for making a bad decision. Everyone makes bad decisions. That's a very normal thing. But we do have the technology and the systems now to be able to fix what was half a correct decision. The umpire made one mistake, but we could have fixed it. But instead, we still have a bunch of laws from a very long time ago that just don't really have anything to do with technology anymore. So we have more information with us now and we can get better decisions because of that. So let's stop getting half a decision and get it right before we get to the last ball of a World Cup when there is four to win and there is a Yorker, there is an appeal, it's given out, the ball goes for four, it's overturned, but it doesn't matter, the batting team still lose. There is no reason for a team to lose on the last ball of a match because we failed to adapt to how the game has moved on. Technology changes sport, and so it's time for cricket to close the LBW loophole. This World Cup, you can catch us every single day over at Jared Kimber Live. It is like the videos here, except they come out quicker and I forget what I'm saying occasionally. We have sometimes up to three videos a day on that channel, but we usually just have our scoreboard and normal podcasts. But, you know, sometimes when a game is good, I just gots to go live.
So gorge yourself over at Jared Kimber Live on my, I don't know, liveness?